Hi class, uh, I'm going to try and go through this now, like demonstrate through the process of cutting, uh, turning your sample down to diameter, and we'll go through as much as we can here on safety and on setup for this. So we've got our lathe, you should be familiar with terminology, headstock, tailstock, three jaw chuck, this is the cross feed tool holder. What we're doing here is we're going to mount our piece of material in, we want to get on the flat um, outside diameter of our material, not necessarily on where it's threaded. So we're going to go into about this far, and then in order to uh, tighten this up, we have to find the place in the three-jaw chuck where the wrench goes, and we're going to rotate this piece and tighten at the same time. We can spin this to see how we're doing. Looks like it's pretty concentric, and I'll give it a little more tension. Okay. So we've got this mounted in here. We want to spin it over by hand before we start it to make sure that it doesn't run into anything. If our tool is underneath there, this would be bad, okay? This happened. So we want to make sure this is out of the way. Spin it by hand freely. We're good to go. To turn the lathe off and on, there's an on-off switch over here on the other side. So this is forward and reverse. We want this turning into us because our cutting tool is going to come underneath and cut material away. So we want to make sure that we choose the lathe forward position to run in. And normally the lathe is going to be set up so it's out of back gear, which means it's going to spin fairly fast, which is good for a cut. Okay. Other things that we need to do here before we go ahead and cut, we need to drill this on the back side and put a uh, live center in the rear of it, basically to hold it and stabilize it so it'll spin on this and help uh, some of the load that's going to be applied here. So I'm going to bring my tail stock in with a drill that I've got set up here. And I'm going to go ahead and go ahead on the tail stock. I'm going to lock the tail stock in place. I've already got my uh, chuck in here with the drill. And I'm going to run this. You can see it's quite a bit off center. It should center up a little bit. And then I'm just going to drill it just enough like that to get a start. I don't want to drill in too far because otherwise it'll break and fail later when we test it. Loosen this. Pull the tailstock back, spin this all the way back, and this will pop out of here. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is put my live center in, and changing this live center out, unfortunately, is going to be a little bit of a challenge. In fact, I should put, I'll work on that later. We need a bumper, but basically, this is a taper, and it just slams in place and locks in, and now it's in. So I can extend this out a little bit. I'm going to push my tailstock back up till it's close run this out with the threads until it contacts. I'm going to lock the tailstock down and then I'm going to put a little bit more preload tension on it, okay? And it should be good and in place now. Now it's basically held between two centers and this is where I bring my tool in and I've got some high-speed steel here that's going to cut. I have to set this tool up so it's at the very center If this is my cutting tool right here, I want my cutting tool to be right at the center or the most outermost point of the circle. I can't have it too high, I can't have it too low. So in order to do that, I'm going to use a straight edge. And I'm going to wheel in here, I have this tightened up right now. And if the straight edge holds this basically vertical or a little bit past vertical, I know that I'm in the right spot. Okay? If it were to be too low, the cutting bit is too low, it's going to push the straight edge towards me quite a bit. That's no good. So I have to just loosen this, and there's a half moon rocker down here. I'm going to adjust this up a little bit, tighten it, and I'm pretty good right there, pretty, pretty close to vertical, okay? All right, some safety things. First of all, we want to make sure that we don't have any loose clothing on. Hair should be tied back, no necklaces, no nothing that would hang over and get caught up in the revolving parts. That would be bad, okay? Other safety, do not brush chips away with your hands. Do not grab on anything like this when it's being turned away. Stop the machine and remove chips and clear it up, okay? On-off switch is right here, so you know how to turn this thing off and on. Don't ever run the lathe with somebody else. You're the one that controls everything on the lathe, okay? So don't let other people run components on it. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark out with the, rule, um, with the ruler a one-inch section that I can neck down. And my ruler doesn't fit in here the best. I should have marked it before I put it in here, but I'm basically going to mark right here 
and I'll mark over to about right here. And I should be able to see those spinning when this is on. I can see my two marks there. I have to be careful working in close to the headstock like this. My tool, notice my tool is kind of pushed over pretty far and I'm actually going to rotate this a little more. Most of this will be set up for you already. And I'm going to check my tool height here. I'm good. Okay. But I'm going to work over real close to the headstock. I'm going to rotate this by hand, make sure I'm not contacting. And I'm good. All right. And then I'm going to have I'm going to go ahead and start this up. I'm going to turn this dial in here. This is my cross feed dial. I'm going to turn it in slowly until I see material be taken off. So take a look at the material. And as soon as I see that right there, I'm going to go back to my cross feed dial. I'm going to loosen this lock right here. And I'm going to turn this to zero. This is zero thousandths right now. If I turn this in, 15 thousandths here, it's going to cut 15 thousandths away. And now I can manually rotate the carriage feed right here and start to carve this material away. Or if my cross feed is set up properly, which it's not right now, I can just manually cut all the way over until I get to my other blue mark. And then go ahead and stop. I'm going to feed back manually and I'm actually going to cut back a little bit further here because I want to get to that other blue mark. Okay? Alright, so I've cut 15 thousandths off the dial here. I'm just rough cutting. I'm going to go another 15 thousandths. And then I'm going to feed this in. This is just rough turning here, which means we're just removing a bunch of material now. I don't want to go past that point where I uh, went the first time because it's going to put too much load on the test piece, so I'm going to stop right there. Wheel back just in front of where I started cutting. I'm going to feed in another 15 thousandths. stop right before so that kind of has a natural neck down. I'm going to pause there, shut it off, and then I'm going to grab a dial caliper and check what I've got for a measurement. Is there a dial caliper on that table? Okay, so take a look at from this. Um, I can show you from here maybe. Let's switch over from the other side. So my original diameter should be right around a quarter inch or 0 0.250. I've got, let's see what I've got if this is, it's not zeroed, so I'm going to loosen the set screw. I'm going to re-zero this. Whoa. Okay, that's good. Lock the set screw. Oh, turn the wrong one. Okay, I'm zeroed now. So I'm going to tighten up on the original material. That's right around 254 thousandths, okay? If I go to my neck down area here, I'm down to 210 thousandths. So I've cut about 45 thousandths off, which is in keeping with the dial. This says I've taken 45 thousandths off, okay? I have to go from 250 thousandths from my original diameter down to 0.125 or 125 thousandths. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the lathe up again. Manually feed it back. This time I'm going to turn in to the 70. I'll go 25 thousandths. Fairly aggressive cut. If I've got a good feed coming off of there like that, that means I'm making uh, the right amount of travel speed. If I can keep a curly cue going on there. And I'm going to stop just before that neck down. Go back to the beginning. Feed it in another 20 thousandths. Stop before the neck down. I'll feed it in another 20 thousandths. Stop before the neck down. And I'm going to feed it back slow and just let it clean up here.
Okay, I'm going to pause there and take a measurement. I should be really close. This is telling me I took 110 thousandths off, which means I should be within about 15 thousandths of my target number. I've got 147 on the dial, 149, and I want to get down to 125. So that means I've got to go about, yeah, 15, let's see, 149, about 20 thousandths down yet. So I'm going to turn this in 15 thousandths more. I'm going to go ahead and cut that. Stop there. I'm going to feed in another 5 thousandths and I'm going to finish cut back. It just means I'm just going to go slower, get a nice finished surface on it. And I'm going to stop before I get to that neck down region again. Shut it off and take a measurement. I should be really close here. Now you can see, Jake, can you see your threads wobbling back and forth? Is that the, yeah, the last bell? The last bell? Yeah. Wow, that went fast. So I am at, straighten out here, 128 thousandths. Really close. I'm going to move this away. See if I've got any narrower spots. 128. So I could go ahead and take another 3 thousandths down. I'm going to turn this back in one, two, three full turns, and then I'm going to come back to. Should be a little close right here. Right there. There's about another 3 thousandths off. That should be good. So I'm going to bring the cross speed back away from this, let it stop turning. I'm going to loosen my tailstock, push this out of the way, remove this from the headstock. Never leave the wrench in the headstock, always put it on top here. And I can go ahead and measure this, see what I've got for a neck down region. Oh, look at that. Right on, maybe a thousandth under. That's good though. Okay, that's it.